Hello and welcome. My name is Shira Cohen and I'm the host of this podcast and the author of a book called Reclaiming Our Wellbeing. I'm a yoga teacher, yoga therapist, Ayurvedic wellness educator and emotional coach. So this is a space of sharing stories that uplift, encourage and transform. So enjoy. Namaste and hello everyone. So I'm back and today I wanted to talk about self-expression and creativity and basically speaking our truth. So when we're creative, we're, we are expressing something that we see, uh, the way we see the world and how important that is for our well-being, for uh, f- f- health, mental, physical, emotional. And um, yeah, I'm just going to get straight into it. So I'm going to read something from Alice Miller. She was a psychologist and a psychoanalyst. And I think this kind of brings it home to how important it is to express ourselves. Um, It is not the traumas we suffer in childhood that make us emotionally ill, but the inability to express them. And um, yeah, I think that's a big thing that we're seeing right now in the world is there's this uh, censorship on all levels. We have this contemporary collective shutdown of our voices, also what we think it's affecting. So I spoke about this, I think, um, a few weeks back or last week. But speaking our truth is the exchange for acceptance and acknowledgement crucial for survival in a domination society. So this is part of my book. Clear communication of our values, thoughts, feelings and needs demands safety, esteem, confidence and acceptance which is kind of what we don't have right now and uh, as a culture as a society as a global society even I would say and I want to speak the truth I don't want to to just speak positive because positive means we can't see what's actually going on I agree we need to be positive we need to stay and remain positive but we also have to look at the dark side of life because you cannot grow into the light if you do not have roots in the darkness and the darkness is what nourishes us eventually the root the plant when you cut the plant you prune it it doesn't grow roots straight away it takes a while it has to consolidate it has to gather itself it has to um, find reserves within the the surroundings around it and that's quite hard in the beginning but once it does it starts to grow and then the root is strong enough to again shoot up the next year into the light and become a stronger tree and again in the winter go down so you can see our our time um our era right now as a very strengthening of our roots like what do we stand for what are we here for what's important to us what do we want to get rid of what is essential for us to grow as a species in our predicament and how serious is our predicament and i think it's necessary to have these nuanced conversations and uh speak about everything that's happening just looking at the light sorry we're just going to get blown away like little fairies because that's what it is okay anyway so i'll just read a little part of the contemporary collective throat energy so when we're talking about um self-expression it's all about the throat it's about the thyroid um it's about in and out our communication it's about denial uh truth uh deceit lies and resonance and and at at the moment i'm sure we can all agree that there is a lot of dissonance rather than resonance because there's a lot of untruths and physiologically uh, viscerally we know that and that's why there's unhealth i've spoken to a lot of friends and colleagues and people say i just don't want to talk about anything negative because i will just break down if i go to a yoga class and someone talks about the state of the world that'll just be it it'll tip me over and maybe that's why you don't want to listen to this podcast when I start going on about it but how the hell are we going to get out of this if we're not gonna if we're not willing to to look at what's really in front of us 
It's only by looking and seeing what's in front of us can we clear out the mess. And we have to clear out the mess. I totally agree. And positivity is important in the sense that it gives us strength to keep going. It lifts us up. But we also, um, again, need those strong roots. So speaking truthfully, responsibly creates connection and benefits to all involved through acceptance and true listening. Communication is shared emotion able knowledge. So emotion able, we're able to emote, we're able to uh, use the energy that we're feeling viscerally and move into that direction. And that might mean we have to leave certain things behind, we have to say certain things, we have to change certain things. It always means change and energy and effort. And the knowledge behind that. So what, what do we disagree with at the moment? What do we agree with? Let's, let's put it all out on the table. Let's have a clear look at things because if we don't, we'll be barking up the wrong tree. And that's what you're seeing right now. This polarization is just people getting so um, emotional and, and afraid. It's a lot of fear, like we spoke about with um, Soraya in our, one of the last podcasts is this fear virus and the fear is making us reactive rather than clear because if you take distance you just that's why i'm reading a lot of history books at the moment to take more distance and see okay it's one of those cycles again this is part of coming to a revolution kind of state in the human mind where we cannot sustain this kind of rhetoric anymore and narrative that's coming from high on down. Um, literally silenced by mask wearing while physical distance called social distancing almost destroyed connection and communication. We held and still hold, I think, immense build up of feelings, thoughts, emotions, and untaken actions, which is what emotions are asking us, translating into internal stress and the ensuing expressions, epigenetics. So that's why I think part of the reason why we're seeing a lot more excess deaths in all countries is because of all the unspoken, unacted, unfelt, unshared experiences that, that we've had. So I was um, having this dinner with some of my colleagues from the sports center where I work, and I don't know them very well. And they're all these kind of positive, yeah, everything's wonderful, blah, blah, blah. And then when I wanted to mention, or I spoke to a few people, one of them who would um, had long COVID, and he was really struggling, he was really happy. And I could see his relief when we could just have a conversation about it. But then when I spoke to some other people about it, they were like, Oh, you're ruining my dinner, let's not go there. I want to have a good time tonight. I was like, we can have a good time and still have serious conversations. I mean, that's how I have good times. <laughs> but they, they shut me down, basically, they completely shut me down, they censored me. And that was in the beginning of the dinner. We had bowling before that, and that was all fun. But then, then I just didn't want to talk. I felt confused and, and uh, hurt, and I just didn't know what to talk about. If I can't talk about everything, then I can't talk about anything. That's how I felt. That's viscerally how I felt. And I could see the two women um, in the beginning kind of like, well, we're not talking about this, but then they noticed I wasn't joining their conversation, which was about food. And I was like, well, that's very superficial. I didn't say it, but you could see it written on my face. <laughs> and that then one of the, the women who's more clued up, she tried to get me into the conversation, but she could see, no, I was shut down. You shut me down. I went into that kind of um, freeze mode really literally. And I knew I was in that and I couldn't pull myself out. I mean, I, tried with the breathing but then i was just angry i was like okay you shut me down i don't want to be part of this silly little conversation um which yeah it doesn't interest me so and and one of the comments from the other woman was yeah well it's a long time ago who cares you know it's past now and i was like well no it's not past there's some people who's well, I couldn't even say that basically but that's what i wanted to say there's some people like the people i'm working with 
in the community center i think i keep getting more and more people who've had vaccine injuries okay it's not rare adverse events they're serious injuries i don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people uh, are debilitated uh, cannot walk anymore they've gone into comas they've had uh, strokes uh, blood clotting uh, myocarditis uh, heart fibrillations this is all very common due to the vaccine and i'm not going to shut up about it i know um, some people might not like me speaking about this i don't care it's my platform i do what i want and um, i'm not going to shut myself down because people get uncomfortable we should be uncomfortable those uncomfortable emotions are what are going to move us into the world we actually want to live in because just pretending everything's fine and skating on this uh what do you call this surface of bullshit um is not going to change anything it's just going to make it worse for the people who are susceptible people who are sensitive people who can see through the lies like children they're still not brainwashed even though we're trying very hard through educational um systems that are just about imprinting and impressing certain ideas and ideologies and um seeing our universities are sponsored by big pharma big agro big government big media for a large degree this is now well known um most of the major outlets for science and medical journals are also not clean anymore there's a lot of a conflict of interest so please be clear about this you know and how are we going to change this by having open conversations okay so self-expression this is um from judith glasser she was an organizational anthropologist and she was a ceo of a big company for communications and coaching and this was her um, discovery towards the end. Neuroscience is teaching us that self-expression is one of the most important ways for people to connect, navigate and grow with each other. And that's what we need right now. We need to grow together rather than to be divided. And that is through this self-expression. Self-expression is so essential for well-being, for community, for connection, for this ability to navigate these darker waters that's where we are let's let's call it what it is and then we can move on rather than trying to skate on superficial surfaces of nothingness they have no meaning and so no substance and without substance we cannot grow we cannot um, transform this or change it and that's what we all seek so Anyway, getting back to epigenetics, thyroid and autoimmune disease, metabolic conditions, cancer and diabetes are related to a chronic inability to communicate our needs honestly and clearly causing physiological stress. So whoever's stressed at the moment and feels they don't want to even have these conversations is because they're already experiencing this physiological stress. But without our willingness to partake in the difficult conversations and more nuanced um, navigation of the landscape of what's going on, we're not going to get past it. And so we are stuck in this kind of loop of physiological stress. To reclaim well being, intercellular communication via the PNA, PNA. I axis, which is our psycho neuro endocrino immunal axis, is essential. So, this is a branch of science that studies the effects of psychological and neurological um, impacts onto the endocrine and immunity, which affects the epigenetics. If sharing our experience means social ridicule, rejection, or feeling unvalidated or unheard, we turn to the world for validation to avoid the pain. We binge, starve, override, overwork, escape, suppress, deny, or ignore our feelings of abandonment. But we need a new currency, one that encourages equal affluence, depth, influence intelligence and integrity of communication which again indicates that nuanced uh 
dialogue and we're missing that and it means difficult conversations it means getting into the weeds and that's what I've noticed there was a lot of resistance even with me and, and one of my cousins that I'm really close to and she's a really intelligent woman and she um yeah we're, we're very we're good friends too but there was a point where we just couldn't discuss anything connected to COVID because it was so charged on both ends and she's a very calm person I'm not but <laughs> even for her it was charging it's been since six, seven months, eight months, maybe more, that we can have more um, diverse uh, dialogue. And it felt very good. And I'm sure a lot of us are feeling that we need to have those conversations, even though it's, it's yes, it's three years ago when it all started, but people are still affected. Um, also, the people who didn't get vaccinated, including myself, um, felt persecuted a lot of us some of us didn't some of us just it was like uh, water off a duck's back but many weren't and then the people who did take and just you know to comply and to make everyone happy who was shaming them and and ridiculing them and smearing um they regret that they did it or they have injuries which is even worse you know, um, and life injuries. There was one woman I've been working with her. I started working with her last year. Um, I'm sure I've said the story before. She went into a rehab, like we worked together for three and a half months. She came to the um, fitness class so I could give her more personal advice and, and exercises. And then she came to the yoga classes, which is just a general group. And I um, adapt to the people there, which they, they're all older and have uh, chronic conditions. So it's quite limited what we can do, but I do try and educate them and um, keep their bodies strong or um, re-educate uh, muscle groups so that the joints are more protected. Um, yeah, and she really moved forward in a lot and she saw that working with me was more effective or she told me than with her physiotherapist so she gave me the number of the physio and I contacted him and we were going to work on a plan together and then when I mentioned that this might be due to her vaccine because of course to medical people you can't say it is due though it was very obvious um, after the second vaccine she went into a coma for three weeks and when she came to she'd been operated on her throat because there was, uh, they said a fibroid, but could have just been blood, the huge blood clot, which might have killed her. Anyway, she lost her voice pretty much and her ability to walk. And now she was in such excruciating pain from the waist down. Um, and when, when she arrived to me, she showed me the piece of paper with all the medication. She was taking more than 30 pills a day because they had put it down to rheumatoid arthritis and um, arthritis and uh, shooting pains in the hip joint uh, degeneration of the bones but she didn't have any of this before so how can that all of a sudden happen <laughs> and it was shooting pains like tingling I was asking her what kind of pain just just saying oh pain isn't very clear you have to get clear on what kind of pain is it a dull kind of grinding pain then it's bone pain but if it's shooting moving pain then it's nerve pain um, and the vaccine is linked and COVID itself is linked to um, neural deterioration and neuropathy uh, so yes I'm going totally into the weeds here but I just want to make clear these are real people she is suffering she's in pain and then she went to this rehab for four months they said to her in the beginning oh it's just three weeks she was really scared she didn't know because she's african she can't speak dutch and she didn't know what was happening she couldn't understand the doctor properly so i had to call and speak to the people and i said it's just for three weeks and you can go whenever you want and she ended up staying four months she had three specialists each day that were working with her voice her body she was learning to swim she'd never swim before 
And um, she came back, she'd gained weight. She hadn't improved. She'd actually gone back from what the work we'd done. So, and this is because they didn't ever, I asked her to speak about the vaccine, that this was a possibility. She said they didn't want to talk about it. They shut her down. So if she's shut down, she doesn't trust them. If she doesn't trust them, when I said this to her in the beginning when we met, it might be the vaccine. She burst into tears. But at the same time, there's this relief because she thought that from the beginning, but she wasn't able to express that and she wasn't able to speak. And I think that is one of the largest reasons that she actually, um, that we, we moved forward in her situation physically mentally emotionally and then she regressed because of the denial okay that's how powerful that is and she gained weight because they weren't feeding her healthy foods you know this is again uh, food industry and um pharma working together or the insurance companies and whoever else else is in medical health care if you can call it care. Um, yeah, so they've made this big pact and they're not actually helping people. They're just taking taxpayers' money again. This woman was in there with three specialists a day, hotel, everything. So you can imagine how much that costs It's and it's not helping her. So she's back to, to where she was when she first came to me. Her voice is a little better, but that's that's the only thing. So... Um, yeah, and this is due to not expressing ourselves, okay? So it affects the whole body. Now, if you think about the thyroid, the neck bone is tiny and it's made for mobility. The strong muscles are foundational to hold up the weight of the brain, skull, and sensory organs. Our throat is the pathway to all we swallow, literally and metaphorically. Sensory intake passes through our skull, pons. Pons is like the part of the brainstem that's really basic. So that's why you have this reactivity when we don't express ourselves. Throat and stimulates a reaction or response. Saliva begins the digestive process by enhancing taste, initiating the necessary digestive enzymes, preventing microbial growth and promoting mouth cleanliness and tissue repair of the teeth through remineralization and strengthening enamel. This all comes from your saliva, so it's so important to chew well. Saliva doesn't come from drinking water, it comes from chewing. The more you use that chewing action in the mouth, the more you create saliva, and so keep this area healthy. Vocal cords express experiences to define and redefine what nourishes, pollutes, and exhilarates us. Our ability to sift and distill biopsychosocial nutrients, energy, and fluids. Digestion, oxygenation, nervous activation, regulation, and metabolism all use the throat pathway. So if you think about our throat, the thyroid is responsible for metabolism. It is responsible for um, sifting through all that we eat, getting the energy from that food. And it's all responsible. Think about it. Throat, mouth, the neck, in, out. I breathe in, I eat in. And when I speak and I breathe out, it comes out. So there's this constant exchange. And that's what the thyroid is about. What else does in, out in our body? Every cell every tissue, every organ, every system, digestive system, respiratory system, uh, nervous system, all these things need the in, out, that exchange. When you hold in again and again, whatever level, whether that's emotional, psychological, physical, on any of those 11 systems that we have, um, you can imagine what's happening. It's constipation. And what happens when we get constipated? build up of toxins and what happens with the build up of toxins when they start to overflow to other systems other bodies physical body emotional body energetic body psychological body soul body just imagine just imagine and let your mind do the rest so when it's balanced this area our self-expression our thyroid our throat 
So what else is self-expression? It's hearing and speaking. Yeah, the ears, the mouth, the throat. And it's also between the head, our thinking, and our heart, the feeling. So it's those two. We think something. Someone tells us to think something else, but we feel, we know what it is we actually want to say. Speak your truth. To be well, speak your truth. Start those conversations again and again. Find the right moments. Find the right space. Create the right space or set up a space or introduce that you want to have this conversation. Find a way in to have that conversation. Because good metabolism equals hormonal balance. It helps the motor and sensory organs to be more coordinated. It stabilizes energy levels, moods, immunity, skin health. If you noticed people lately, how much pimples we have, especially young people. Have you noticed people's hair, nails, tone muscles, the sleep of people, their biorhythms? And that's all because we're not expressing what we're seeing. We know what we're seeing. We know what's going on and we're not sharing it. Every time I open this conversation in the the clinic where I work, people are so relieved. When I do it in my just general classes, people are so relieved. Please open these conversations. Start to have real conversations. It's so important. In utero, our thyroid develops at the back of our tongue. Then it moves down to the end of the throat before birth. So this is still all from my book. The thyroid and the parathyroid gland responsible for metabolic regulation converts intake into output. The continuous cycle of breakdown to build up. Thyroxin hormones maintain metabolic activity of our cells, supporting functional integrity of all our tissues. So imagine the cells, they need this good metabolism to form good tissues, whether that's of an organ or a nerve or the brain cell or whatever. All these cells need good metabolism. When we don't have this good expression exchange of in and out, we don't have those good buildups. That's cells in your body, cells of the mind, cells of your emotions. So we become reactive. We become constipated or we become diarrhea. You know, we have this verbal diarrhea. When we don't have good expression, we can be barking up the wrong tree again and again and again misdirecting those emotions, projecting onto people and things where it's not appropriate and it's not going to change anything correctly and not doing it. Okay, maybe maybe you're in a survival mode and you need to not say anything and not go there to charge yourself up. That's different. But then again, notice if you're getting too bogged down into that because you could be staying, and I noticed this from myself, There's moments where you stay too long in a pattern because you think you need it for safety. And then it becomes a habit and then it's hard to break the habit. And then you don't know, is the habit making you tired or are you tired? And you need that habit to bring back balance. So sometimes that is the thing. And this is, again, in, out, in, out, understanding the thyroid, the process of exchange. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to go more into that. But how can we do more self-expression? Body language. So move, posture, stance. How do you stand in the world? Can you take this stance of opening the heart, expressing yourself through arms nice and raised, lifted up the heart, extending those arms, full body movement. So the range of motion of your shoulders. And we talked about that, I think, in self-love is 180 degrees. It's the biggest um range of motion of the body is your arms so really use that express all directions totally behind you and down and then up and then all the way over the head and then in front so using that whole range that's also freeing it look at it how it moves your throat how it moves the neck and shoulders that's all part of the expressive um, area of the body the thyroid and throat the ears um just doing those neck movements chin to the chest and chin up looking left looking right how often do we do that are we still looking or are we just using the eyes 
So this expression of the body, expression of our eyes, look at people, look people in the eyes. See if you can pull a face when they pull a face and reflect back to them how they're looking because we've lost that when people are not looking at each other anymore. Either they're in their cars or they're, they're on their iPhones and they've got these things in their ears and they're not on purpose. Like I on purpose look people in the eye. I want to make contact. And I know for some people it's confronting. But imagine if everyone just stopped looking in each other's eyes because that's what a lot of people, I would say, 60% of people are doing, especially younger people. They're, it's, it's been a shock to their system and now they're confused because most adults are not speaking up. People are just complying or sticking their head in the sand, keep working, just do whatever you got to do to survive. It's not going to change the world and it's not helping our children. So words, everything I'm saying here, words is how we express ourselves, but we can use words in different ways. We can write one word and then reflect on that word and see how we can bring that word into life in our everyday exchanges. We can journal, we can write poems, we can do blogs, we can have conversations like a podcast. Um, yeah, words, write one word, a one word post. Actions, actions we take. Actions are an expression. Sometimes we don't know how to verbalize or communicate what we feel, but we can do it through an action. Um, clothes, the clothes that we wear say something about how we feel, what we think, our possessions, um, reveal our identity and our values. So also the people we hang out with, the people we find important, interesting thing about my daughter right now she's kind of in this phase first she was identifying as this and then she hung out with this kind of people and now she's realizing she's not just that and she's hanging out with a different sort of people and it's really nice just to see that she's experimenting and telling me about it and, and conscious of it so it's very nice and that is part of self-expression allow yourself to be fluent allow yourself to be amorphous allow yourself to move out of the box Okay, so the essence of self-expression, again, is that in-out exchange, communication, metabolism on every level. Um, it's about truth, denial, deceit, resonance, and the effects of the resonance or dissonance we're receiving onto our well-being. And then creativity. So we get creative from self-expression. If you're not feeling creative, if you're a creative person and you've lost your creativity or you feel there's a block, usually it's because we're not being honest with ourselves. So have a look. How are you not being honest with yourself? How are you denying certain things? How are you lying about something? Maybe one aspect. Maybe it's not from outside. Maybe it's about something personal. How are you lying to yourself? Maybe it's your values again your identity maybe you've shifted in consciousness but the people you live with or the people you hang out with or uh, the way you make money doesn't fit that picture anymore so then you're inhibiting your self-expression so how can you work in a better way with that so psychologically if we look psychologically at um, self-expression it's highly prized value in um, the west due to our individualism. But then there's this graph, I will put it in the link, it's really interesting, this graph of different cultures and countries um, from the level of individuality. I'll read it out. So the graph is an Inglehart Wetzel world cultural map. And it's survival versus self-expression values on the um one gradient and the other gradient uh the gradient what do you call that the axis traditional versus secular values so europe protestant like germany finland netherlands switzerland iceland norway uh, sweden germany we're all in the protestant europe group and we're completely on the self-expression values and the secular values so we have nothing we don't we're not in awe in anything we don't have traditions in anything. We're totally in one corner. We're the furthest out. Then you have the other side, which is Afro, 
African Islamic, Egypt, Zimbabwe, Morocco, Yemen, Jordan, Ghana, Kuwait, Tanzania, even Indonesia's in there, Myanmar, Iraq, Palestine, uh, Turkey, Iran, a little bit more into the center. They're getting more towards um, secular values, not so much self-expression, um, but a little bit. But they're more traditional survival. And then if you look at the graph, I will put a link. It's very interesting because then there's nothing that actually has self-expression and traditional. So there's no culture that's actually into the self-expression values and traditional. So I think maybe that's where we should be looking as a global culture. Okay, so let's go back to traditions and see and pick up what's important. I think that's why yoga is such a big thing in the West because we do seek some tradition, some old roots, something connected to the ancients, something connected to older wisdom, um, to nature itself, and um, people who studied nature and learned from nature, people who were reflective like the yogis and rishis, but also saints and um, more holistic philosophers rather than scientific philosophers. Anyway, but yeah, how do we express ourselves as self-expression values that are based on traditions, traditions that have worked through eons and eons of time and worked in societies that were caring rather than selfish and egocentric, which is the kind of self-expression that the West assumes. Um, It's a kind of deification of, of the, the individual, which is not healthy because that's where we've got now and that's why there's this polarization because everyone feels very lonely in their individual life. We've lost traditions, we've lost the tribal survival mind. So that we're totally disconnected. We have no God, so uh, where do we look to? We don't have anything under us nor above us. So what do we have? The leaders we are supposed to look up to who are like a midway between heaven and and hell <laughs> right now um <laughs> they're not there either or they're totally self self-absorbed and um careless so where does that leave us where does that leave our children okay so i think we have to come back to our children that's earthing us and, and find some tradition to uplift us and bring it all together. What's all the goodness we have as humans, as humanity? There's plenty of good stuff. Anyway, I'm babbling on. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to stop here. And, um, yeah, I just want you to feel, feel into your body, feel into your mind, and feel into those ways that we can self-express ourselves so body language, words, actions, feel into it and imagine if there was absolutely no judgment, no one watching you, no one to ridicule you, if you could just take away all that outer noise basically and just be you, be you completely um, and act and behave and speak from that sense of there is no censorship, there is no wrong or right. There is just this amorphous kind of uh, thing called life that we are experiencing. And there's a big change going on right now. And just focus, yes, focus on the positive, but be aware of what's going on. Not in the sense that you want to dwell on it or go on and on about it like I do, <laughs> but to understand the context of where we are and to see it, zoom out from there and see it from a distance and then put all the cards on the table, understanding that that is just a little small part of it. There's all these other good things going on. We are a beautiful species. We are creative. 
we are amazing we are conscious this is the amazing part of life as humanity we are conscious and i think animals are conscious to a degree too but um they just can't express it and we can and through that expression through that exchange of words like i'm saying something to you you might not disagree you might disagree completely on some points but through that you refine define and again refine and get closer and closer to what you do mean and feel and what i do mean and feel like what i might be saying now might be nonsense in one year time to me but first you have to say it first you have to put it out there and reflect on it yourself or get the feedback from people to change the concept into something that's better that's what science is is all constant refining it's not a dogma it's not one answer to everything that is not science that is capitalism gone awry that is just selfishness but yeah we're not on that one we're on to self-expression in the sense that it's promoting human connection and health and um just act in it that way that there is no wrong behave speak share from that place of no wrong so last night i went to a ballet class and it was the same there's a lot of people were very serious there was a beginner's class so i don't see why you should take yourself too serious and everyone is adult so we're not working towards um being professionals on a dance floor (laughs) so i broke the ice with a few silly jokes and um, some people really appreciate it and some thought um, they, they just couldn't laugh. They were so serious. But it's important to, to not take yourself serious and to just see everything as progress. We just work in progress always. We will never have the answers. We are all looking together for the answers and we'll find it together as we go and then it'll be changing again. So that's what my science teacher told me in grade nine, Mr. McCabe, and I love him for it because it's still true and it will always be true. So much love to you. Enjoy, enjoy your life, do different things and express yourself. Take that full amount of space to move your arms, to move your body, to take that stance, to have the posture you want to have, whether that's a mental posture, a physical posture, an emotional posture an energetic stance in life state it if you can't state it through words use actions use your artwork express through your values through the people you go about with through um, complying if we want to use that word with what you feel aligned with on a soul level so namaste very long talk it was meant to be two minutes (laughs) (laughs) into god knows how long bye bye everyone